and uh, I understand that uh, you're in charge of a project out there that Captain Yeager's going to fly, and I have to tell somebody I, I just taped his ribs, he cracked a rib. But I thought I'd better tell somebody. Uh, thanks a bunch. Uh, so in the morning, I'm walking down the ramp with Mr. Walt Williams, and I see a came up alongside and he said, how's Jeff feeling today, Bob? I thought to myself, oh, this guy knows. He's devious. <laughs> uh, I, I smiled sweetly and I said, oh, just as ordinary as other. Okay. Um, I thought, now, if he knows, he's going to Washington. Washington's going to go to Boyd. I had the authority to move Chuck out and put Hoover in. That was part of my direction. But my written directions from Boyd was, the project will be progressive and it will be brief. Safety flight is paramount, but it is not to impede success. I thought, if I move Bob Hoover in, I owe it to Bob to give him at least two no, not supersonic flights. Right. If I do that, they were, I knew what the schedule was. It probably would delay going through by two months. That's in violation of my director from Boyd. And knowing Boyd, I said, I'm not going to move him. Uh, not that I had any disregard for his health, <laughs> but just I'm not going to do it. So I kept quiet. And of course, the morning of the flight, I caught Jackie Ridley cutting a piece of broom handle off of a broom. And he looked up, saw me, and said, Can you have? <laughs> so I got caught, smiled. I, I said, Morning, Jackie. I went by. And of course, he needed, Chuck needed that piece of broom handle because his, he couldn't lock the locked the door he had to do it with his left with mm -hmm. the broom in the <laughs> So um, we went through. But the day before the flight, late afternoon, P-80 landed out on the lake bed. And in the P-80 was Colonel Kendall Paul. He was Boyd's deputy. Now mind you, all that three-way bank shot I was thinking of, he got out of the airplane and said, I, Bob, I came out to fly co-pilot for you. This was Boyd's message. Yeah, I know it, but I know you're following my orders. I'm not going to let you hang dry. I'm going to have Kendall Paul pull that handle. That's that story that's in that folder. Mm -hmm. So that actually, although history says Jackie Ridley was the guy that pulled that handle, it was not. It was Colonel Kendall Paul. Pull that handle. And um, that was Boyd's way. Many years later, after I'd been promoted, Boyd had retired. He was down in Florida. And I had breakfast with him. And I leaned over and I said, uh, Joe Boyd, I've had one quite dying, burning question. I got to ask you. And he looked at me with those flinty eyes. He had. He said, don't. <laughs> so, but that's the kind of guy, that's the kind of leadership we had in those days. Um, generals, because he knew by sending Kendall out, if something bad happened, it was going to be his neck. But he wasn't going to let his junior officer, project man, to take the fall. Uh -huh. Uh, I often wondered where they, where our leadership is these days. Um, <clears throat> when the sound barrier was broken, it wasn't announced right away. Hmm? When the sound barrier was broken, it wasn't announced right away. Oh no, it? we, uh, Bob Hoover was at 40,000 feet, about 40 miles ahead. So when Chuck came screaming past him, he, it was an RF-80. He, he tilted the wing a little bit, took a picture. And that picture, once we developed it, you could see a rocket exhaust is solid. 
Mm -hmm. You can see little puffs. That's where the shock wave was behind the tail, oh, cutting through there. And the scientists could measure the distance between the puffs to determine, yeah, we've gone through the speed of sound.